<clears throat> All right. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Berwick Planning Board. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is the first planning board meeting of the year and the first of the new decade. How about that? Very exciting. Uh, planning board members present tonight. We have regular member Frank Underwood. We also have Sean Winston and Mike LaRue. Absent tonight is uh, the vice chair, Nicole Fecto, and alternate <coughs> Dave Ross Lyons. We also have our code enforcement officer here, and we have our town. We'll talk about this offline, your title that you've been calling yourself, but for as far as I know, it's planning technician slash webmaster slash Facebook administrator slash um, concert promoter James is that's, here. That's the legal title. Okay. <laughs> and two members of the public here. I'd like to open up public comment session. It's open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. Feel free to come forward, just state your name and your address. If you have any comments that you'd like to make now, you can make them during public comment. We're not, looks like the applicant is not here this evening. No pressure, you don't need to come forward. If anybody wants to come forward, public comment session is open. Okay, going once, going twice. We'll close the public comment session and we'll move on. We have another public uh, comment session at the end of the meeting. Uh, old business, we have an application here. The um, applicant was supposed to be here, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's running a little bit late, so we can go down to new business if there's no objections to that. We need to approve the minutes. Oh, we need to oh. do Yes, the, we yes. do. Thank you. Mike? Yeah. See, I didn't. Somebody's I wasn't. Paying, I wasn't. Paying attention. I wasn't at that meeting, so I just blew over the <laughs> approval of minutes. So next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for the Thursday, December nineteenth, twenty nineteen meeting. I will be abstaining because I was not present at this meeting. I have no comments on the minutes already. I didn't see anything. I'm good. Okay, so the motion will be for the approval of the minutes. I'll move that we uh, approve the minutes for the December nineteenth planning board meeting. Okay, we have a motion and a second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, and I'm abstaining from that vote. All right, now we can move on to um, new business here. <coughs> Conditional use application, adult use marijuana storefront, 513 Portland Street map, R72, lot 5. It's in the RCI zone, and the applicant is Trican Alternatives. And James, I'll turn it over to you. Sure, I'll read a little bit of... BJ's memo, he writes, as you may recall, in October of 2018, the board approved a medical use and food prep facility processing for Trican. In March, they were back before the board seeking uh, medical marijuana storefront. Now Trican is seeking approval to utilize the other portion of the building, formerly a beauty shop, to be used as an adult use retail store. The adult use storefront would be segregated by a separate entrance in the main lobby of the building with an operation schedule of seven days a week, open from seven to seven daily. And expanding the operation, the business will go from eight employees to approximately 25 employees. The submission includes a revised architectural plan of the building and internal layout of the facility. The submission also shows an aerial of the facility with proposed employee parking area to the rear of the facility. And then Lee Jay goes into a bit about the, the parking. And since then, Aaron submitted a bit on the parking plan where Lee Jay um, references Article 7, which is the parking standard requirements. And based off uh, the square footage, the um, Required parking spaces is 31 spaces, and I believe, Aaron, you'll have, was it 39 spaces on, on site? Yep. So 26 in the front and then 13 in the back for, for employees. Um, in the parking plan, Aaron mentions that, um, well, I'll, I'll let you get into like the, how the shifts will work. Sure. Um, so, um, so there's a host of waivers, I think based on the fact that they've gone through some of the conditional use 
with the medical. Um, but Lee J does suggest going, looking at them carefully and kind of if uh, we find an application to plead, then set a public hearing. So I might enter it up. But. All right, come on up. Just state your name for the record and our viewers at home. We're a very highly rated program here on Thursday nights. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm Aaron Barth, um, uh, president of uh, tri -Kian Alternatives at 513 Portland Street in Berwick. <coughs> um, as James uh, was uh, stating uh, about the parking, um, I'll just kind of reiterate that, um, that uh, our anticipation of uh, employees right now, we have a total of eight uh, employees that shifts out. Um, uh, so that's a total of our employees. However, they're not all working in, in the storefront at the same time. Um, we split days um, because we're running 12-hour shifts. Um, <clears throat> so three, um, we have three days and three days uh, that the employees are swapping back and forth. So um, we would probably do the exact same thing um, in the adult use side, even though uh, our anticipation is to increase uh, the number of employees. That would be, again, total encompassing uh, the building on both adult use and medical side. Um, we would have uh, probably about a total, max total, obviously not initially, uh, but max total of um, five uh, employees in the adult use side uh, at one time. And then uh, we're at about four, four on the medical side. So a total of nine. Uh, then you would double up the cars while they're doing the shift change. Right. So no, the shift change. No, the the shift change based on the days. So they only work three days. Uh, even though we have a, a lot of employees, they're not all working at the same time. So we have uh, they work three days. At on, twelve hours. That's right. Okay. Oh, okay. That's right. 12, so, you, 12 so you're not going to have you're not going to have a shift on. change during the day. No shift change oh. during the day. No. There is no shift change during the day. They, they work straight through. <coughs> they're assigned there, there for a time. <coughs> they're assigned certain days, but, you know, we have a total of, uh, you know, a lot of employees. <laughs> so. Looking at that employee parking lot, is that asphalt or is that, what is that? Yeah, that's asphalt. It is? All right, it just didn't, yeah. it didn't look like that. Are you going <coughs> to? One, one thing that, uh, you know, as far as number of parking spaces, if we needed to increase uh, the number of spaces, uh, one one idea or proposal I had was, which I would have to find out um, the setbacks, is to build a retaining wall along uh, Old Route 4 and uh, extend uh, the parking lot out towards Old Route 4. <coughs> so that way I had uh, parking on the front of the building and then... Um, adjacent how many how many spots are you off by three yes he, he has more than enough no i have i have plenty of spots more than it, enough to meet our ordinance <coughs> so, yeah. when, so when you say this calculates out to 31 spaces is that based on the square footage of the total building that has both uses in it that is, or is that just the square footage associated with the adult retail store no it was associated with both the medical the adult use and the office space. So it calculates out to 31 for all the uses, if we approve this, that <coughs> will be there. And then, but he's got room for 39, is right. you say So that? keep in mind, I have a chef uh, that needs to park. And, you know, uh, you know, I have some other people in the basement uh, that we lock up during the day. In the basement, that's a joke. <laughs> but the, uh, the parking counts and the parking numbers that's takes consideration for customers and employees. So it's every correct. It's all covered. That, okay. That's right. <clears throat> so uh, the intention is to have all employees uh, park in the rear, and then all um, the upper lot and side. Um, <clears throat> that's all for customers. And in that lot, there are two handicap spots. Um, however, we're probably going to relocate those handicap spots, but keep two of them as handicap does that does that number need to increase or is that enough for that i i don't i don't know what the required 
handicapped. Yeah, and I'm not sure what the so, what so the there's ADA currently requirements there's are. currently two handicapped spots. We're not increasing or decreasing the number of okay. spots. So unless we revamped the parking lot. Yeah, because I know there's at a, this juncture we're not a, like I don't know if it's a ratio or a certain number that. <clears throat> Yeah. Out of whatever you have, I know it's yeah. a certain number has to be so so accessible. two um, two separate entrances for the medical and so, for the retail. So it's like uh, there's a picture of it. Yeah. Uh, I, but, yeah. Um, so it's a it's like a Cape Cod, right? Center Cape entrance. Walk into the foyer. Inside that foyer, um, you have a, a an adult use side on your left and a medical side on your right. Both doors. Um, and the handicap are right there at the door. And there would be a handicap ramp. Uh, That's right something, there, Jennifer. You entrance. could just check on to see if there is a separate look yep. look see into the number of handicap you may need. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I will. And then there there are two flanking doors, um, on the front of the building, the two far flanking doors. Uh, those would be exit doors. So entrance door in the center, exit doors on the flanking side. So it's. One way in, one way out. Any other questions? Uh, I'm, I'm still tied up a little bit or hung up a little bit on whether or not Maine has issued the final regulations for the retail. So they have. If they have. Could, we've already uh, applied for the. Those license. have been, Mike. Are you have they been issued? They were issued in a draft. They are issuing them um, they are or have they, been they they have been um, it's just they're still changing stuff as it's coming though well the only so reason I bring it up is I watched what they did in Massachusetts and when yeah. they were changing them in the 11th hour they turned around and they put some of those requirements back on the individual municipalities to deal with whatever those particulars might have been mm. and I've been kind of hung up on the fact that I wasn't going to support anything until the regulations were signed and inked and issued. Mm -hmm. So I will not support, I did it with the other one that was in here, I will not support any action on this unless those regulations have been. And I understand it's, well, to, I understand it's to apply and get placement and get into the loop and the system, but I'm hung up on the fact that the regulations have not been formally. Actually, they issued. have been formally set forth. Yeah. No, that that's incorrect. They have so when you're saying they're still tweaking them, though, what's that mean? <coughs> well, so, yeah. So uh, as of recently, uh, the only uh, change that there has been is that um, the state uh, had issued a contract with a company. Um, not was it BioTrack? Yep. Uh, it was BioTrack, which is a seed to sale um, tracking system, and um, that contract. Um, I guess amicably got dissolved um, and, and the state has decided to go with another company uh, that they are uh, signing contracts with which is called Matrix and Matrix is actually um, one of the largest uh, seed to sale tracking uh, systems they're using it in almost all states um, I, I don't know what happened with BioTrack um, not really our, our thing um, we were in the process of starting to launch BioTrack, but then <clears throat> literally the day we were getting a hold of the state, we were informed that uh, uh, the state had dissolved that contract and is now um, under new contract with a new seed to sale tracking, which is called Matrix. Um, so none of the none of the laws or anything that has to that yeah. if anything's like that's changed, it's got to go to the legislature. So we've, I realize that. We, yeah. we've recently reached out to uh, OMP, um, and OMP indicated to us that uh, that this change is not going to impact uh, the launch of... Uh, uh, and OMP is Office of Marijuana, Marijuana Policy. Policy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're, they're the go-to. I mean, they're it. Now, I read somewhere over the last couple of days, there are 40 applications in front of the state at this juncture? Uh, no, there's probably more than that. Way more than probably that. Probably a couple hundred. That was the first couple weeks. That was yeah. 40 yeah. came there's in probably, the first couple There's probably of at weeks. least 200. I, I have no, I can't even guess. How no. many licenses has the state issued? None. Okay. Yeah. They're still in the process of going over. I mean, there's a lot to go over. 
uh, in these applications because you have the retail store applications and then you have the cultivation store applications. At this juncture, we're just applying for the retail store applications. Our intent mm -hmm. is to purchase all products for the adult use side but continue uh, cultivating for our medical side. And the only reason we're doing that is because right now, North Berwick uh, opted out for the adult use cultivation. Uh, so, Don't get me wrong, I'm also asking questions because you're, you're well versed in the subject. Sure. We're on a learning curve, Absolutely. especially this end of the table, yeah. just so that you know. Um, I'm glad and, I have a little you presented, support too. <laughs> you presented very well, and sure. as we, we are on Berwick Community TV, and I think the fact that some of these things are happening at the, le at the state level, it's important that if you can bring us up to speed on yeah, what's, what that is evolving, we're that's, very, that's a we're thankful very for that. Involved, um, okay. you know, we're, we're touching base uh, with OMP on a weekly basis, um, if not a couple times a week, uh, just to make sure that we're on track. We're doing the right things. Uh, we don't want to be. We actually want to be ahead of the curve uh, as far as utilizing the seed to sale tracking, mm -hmm. um, our POS systems and make sure that we're ready to go when the adult use licensing comes out. We don't want to be, uh, I think there is going to be um, some, um, a, a learning curve uh, mm -hmm. with some of these companies and we want to be uh, ahead of that learning curve before the licensing is even uh, really awarded, so. Will we be taking any action on this tonight? We can. Uh, the application all, all, all I'm application complete would be the first step. Would be the first step. Correct. Just to recognize it is complete yeah. because I, I'm sitting in for a board member that has been set aside for a while and taking his spot for the end of his term. And I converse with him on a lot of these issues. And this is one that has been right in it Paul's all wheelhouse all along. And so if oh. we're not taking anything other than voting for a complete application, it would give me a chance to catch up to my little buddy. Well, it also, and then we would also be scheduling a public hearing and a site walk if one was, was needed. But we'd also have to um, act on, the, we'd have to look at the uh, waivers as well this evening. Yeah. Okay. Can, we, can well, we talk about handicap accessible parking real quick? So you guys just know what the law requires. So it says that from 26 to 50 parking spots, you, you need two. But one has to be handicap van accessible. Is yours? Um, right now, uh, the existing one is. Okay. Uh, we do have one handicap van accessible. Um, and uh, the intention is to um, have the whole center um, entrance walkway, like, marked off and, and have handicap on both sides. You know what I'm saying? So, so that way uh, it would be super wide spaces. How you do it is really not up to me. I can yeah. only tell you what the law states. Sure. So, so it's, the answer two. Is yes. <laughs> it's two per, from 26 to 50 parking spots, it's two, but one has to be handicapped van accessible. So that's a space and a half approximately? Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Sean, anything? Um, <clears throat> I, this is really a, not really a question, but an observation. Something I don't know. If maybe I don't know if you've thought about this or might want to think about this. Looking at the two exit doors, um, the possibility for someone to be exiting, and for someone to grab that door. So I've already thought about that. Okay. So I want to make sure that uh, you know. Uh, I, I, I I know, like the I, the I, entrance I'll, I'll be, is, looks good with it. It's sort of an airlock type situation. But I was looking at the two so exit I, doors. Yeah, I'm going to be talking to the architects about that just to just to uh, spec out those doors. Um, I want to make sure that nobody can actually enter through those two exit doors. They can only go through that yeah. one center entrance um, and, and, and have the ability for egress, three different egresses on the front of that building, um, just in case of whatever. Yeah, and I went, Mad rush. right now you've got one side, probably not as many people, but you may get more people Somebody holds that door open for somebody else sure. without knowing what they're doing, and well, that's another thing too. Is I redesigned uh, the whole front that that center entrance. Um, we're doing a right now. It's a single door, and we're doing a double door entrance. <clears throat> that's all I have, Mike. So you, you uh, for the adult use, you're not going to be 
cultivating is just going to be a package sale. So there's only going to be one real processing room, and that's going to be for like bud processing room for medicinal. Uh, what, what do you mean by processing? Room? Just trimming and having things separate. So right. um, everything, um, all processing yeah. um, happens in North Berwick. Yeah, okay. And then, gets, okay. and then gets... Uh, so it's just the, the edibles and stuff that right, gets yeah, made. Right, yeah, the kitchen, okay. and yeah, yeah, all that. Okay. Yeah. So um, and we, we're intending on uh, setting up uh, packing um, is really what we need um, upstairs in the office. Okay. We, we want to have a packing. So there are deliveries then that come from North Berwick to, to this facility? Currently, uh, yes. Is it small panel trucks? Is it? It's my power Personal wagon. vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just me. <laughs> okay, but I mean, yeah. there's no large trucks or any impacts from, no, from no, a delivery I, service. No, I mean we do get deliveries. We you know we have a, a, a linen service mm -hmm. uh, come, um, and uh, it's it's what a big panel truck. They don't have tractor trailers. It's, it's not like Cumberland Farms home. where they back the truck across <laughs> the road no, and block no. it. <laughs> No, okay. no. I mean, I've had tractor trailer <laughs> trucks stop and park and come in and see if they can buy medicine, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> they do that on the road. All right, so tonight we're looking at two things, or a couple, three things actually, whether or not the application's complete, then we're going to vote on the waivers, and then we can set a public hearing and also then discuss if we want to have a site walk again at this facility. The reason, <clears throat> just on the waivers there, um, Mr. Chairman, um, these are checked because these were all submitted as part of the first package. Correct. Okay. Correct. So it's a formality of the granting. Absolutely. The waivers still yeah. Needed. Nothing's changed. Okay. There's no new construction or anything like that. So you know, it's just all. Um, you've already submitted these. So well, we submitted a remodel. So we are. Intending on remodeling the building as far as new construction goes. So yeah, you're just not adding a foot square footage. No, we're not. Footprint right. stays the same. Footprint you're just, stays the same. You're putting a facade on it. I'd say two little. You're not expanding. Overhead. You're not expanding the footprint. I, just, I have two things for for waiver wise. We might want to talk about the septic system. Take a look at look at that because the, the septic system on file is for 1985, 12 office employees. Historically, the building was used for offices, residential. So, I think on the whole, you're still less than what it's historically been used for. But yeah, um, who? So there's an HHE 200 form in the file. Is the soils evaluator that did that still around? Is he still? I can look. In, I can look. We can look into find it. Find out and maybe a, get get him to speak to the issue on the fact that there's going to be a little more use there and whether or not there's. So, so I'll also speak with the architects in regards to that. I'm sure that they're they're doing all that and, as well. And then the low impact design thing. Are you doing any land, landscape? I think I may have asked you this. Are you doing, trying to do any landscaping or you like rain gardens? So, <laughs> so um, I, I mean, we're just going to kind of redo what's already there. Um, but in terms of, um, are you putting in new windows for the building? We are putting in new windows. So I mean, I would assume with the new, new facades in the building, it's you're increasing the R value of the. I hope so, because it's pretty the, bad right now. This isn't the building complex where Salmon Falls and across the street. This, okay, you're yep. not in that shared well group. I am. Yes, oh, you is. are in that shared mm -hmm. well group. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there's no, <clears throat> and there is no additional impact, you know, as far as, uh, you know, what I've already been approved for, there's no change. We're not increasing uh, water usage or, or anything like that. I mean, I, w I don't think I sat on the board when that I remember that was issue I remember discussion it, yeah. flared yeah. up. But yep. has any resolution mm -hmm. been brought about by all the pe people out there as to, if the well does have a problem, how it's going to be remedied? Well, if the well had a problem, I'd just dig a new well. <laughs> well, but I mean, the, the, but you had three people using one well. Was that the, his, yep. is that the history of the site? Yeah, and, but it's a pretty, you know, long lasting well. It's, it's mm -hmm. been operational for a number of years with no impact. 
there's not an operate there's not a, 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 a an agreement between the users on maintaining it and paying for it and putting money to side. There's not. So it's a. No. And the way that we and the way that Lee J explained this, there's adequate water there now, and if there isn't, then that's their problem. It becomes their problem, and then it becomes a civil issue between them. Between between the three Santa property Falls. owners. Okay. Yeah. Ted did bring up a so. good point. You're you're replacing a hair salon, which theoretically you'd be using less. But still, I think it's with the employees. It's still just good due diligence to look into the subject. Yeah. Capacity. <coughs> no, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the only question usually happens is when someone turns the tap and nothing comes out, they're going to call who? The town. They're going to call us, James and I. Yeah. yeah. yeah they're going to so call code. So it would code. be a civil issue, though. So if what do you mean? Guys, if, if 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 the well went dry. I'm calling Salmon Falls. Right, and you guys are going to figure it out amongst each other. Yeah. So it would be a civil issue. There's nothing that we could do about it. Is right. What he's uh, really, trying it's to a private well. Right. right. He just wants you to understand that going forward. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, Jennifer doesn't need a call. Town manager doesn't need a call. Three selectmen don't. Well, Mark. Call, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> call Mark. <laughs> yeah. Call Mark. Call yeah. Mark. Yeah, yeah he's, he's the, uh, <laughs> the other side. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I got up. I went in the weeds on that one. But you know what, though? Frank's right, though. I do think that when you talk to your engineer, you should look into making sure sure that your septic is suitable for what you're trying to do. I'm sure it is, but just make sure. I would cross that T for yeah, sure. I'll, I'll touch base. Yeah. All right. We're ready, excuse me. Are we ready to take action on uh, the application completeness? Um, I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, just accept the application as complete. That allows us now to go forward to a public site visit and a public hearing. But I will make that motion, but I do want a side to say, every time you come in here, if you could give us a one-on-one update on where things are happening at the state level, including whether or not any licenses have, have been issued, Absolutely. you're more in tune in the loop than we are, but any helpful information along that line would go a long way in satisfying yeah, at least me. More than happy to help. All right. So would, you, would you like to make that motion now? Yeah. Make the motion that we, we call the application complete for, let's see the official name, Tri, Tricam Alternatives, LLC. Okay. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion on application completeness. All in favor? Okay. Uh, next, let's take a look at the waivers here. We'll vote on each individual waiver. So the first waiver that is requested here uh, external plumbing permit or permission letter to enter municipal water sewer lines. There is no municipal water sewer lines out there or on-site soil investigation report by licensed site evaluator, which you already provided initially back, what was it, two years ago? Mm -hmm. So that he's requesting a waiver on that because there's already one on file with the town. So we'll, we'll just do, we'll, we're going to we'll make motions for each of these. <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll move, we... Uh Accept the waiver for the external plumbing permit or permission letter. Okay. Second. Second. And then do we have uh, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next is a written statement documenting proposed low impact design for the site to reduce stormwater volumes. LID includes but is not limited to green roofs, rain gardens, tree wells, infiltration basins, and permeable pavement. We made you do that the last time. James also made some discussions. We can either continue to go ahead with this waiver request or you can just put something on your final plans that just says that just says you're going to increase the R value. Maybe add a few shrubs. Petunias. <laughs> What would you like? Okay. But sure. Yeah, we could do that. With the remodel, you're going to be increasing the R value of the buildings. Yeah. That's your low impact design. You're not going to be increasing impervious surfaces or anything yep. like that. So, all right. We'll, then we could skip that waiver there. Okay, great. Um, then next is materials to satisfy section 981 or 98I1. Uh, a through S as they apply to conditional use review. Now I'm going to have to look those up because I don't remember what those are. I don't know those off the top of my head. And James, what are those? Uh, just it's supplemental information that isn't directly covered by the other application. Do you know what page that is on? Am I even going in the right direction? Section nine. Uh, let's see. 
nine, eight, oh, here we go, nine, eight, I, a description of proposed uses to be on, look, a description of the proposed uses to be located on the site, including quantity and type of building construction, if any, total floor area and ground coverage of each proposed building and structure, and percentage of lot covered by each building or structure, method of solid waste disposal, all these things that have been um, previously in here before. Oh, did you get in touch with the, the police chief? Let him know with the proposed change. Um, no, I mean, as, as far as the last um, interaction um, with, with the police chief, you, know, you mean as far as the adult use goes? Yeah, just letting him know that, hey, not only are we gonna have the medical here, no, we but we're also gonna have this here. No. No. All right. I mean, he, the last the last interaction it was, you know, the feedback that I got from them is it's not our responsibility to um, address their security plan. No, it's just an FYI. Sure. Could you just draft a letter to, to, to chief sure. to the uh, chief town sure. and just I can do uh, that. It, it could be one paragraph long and then just CC James on it. It could even be in an email and just say, sure. I'm currently going before the planning board and these are the changes that I'm gonna make. Just an FYI for you and your guys to know. Did we ever get the one for the greenery across yes. the way here? Yep. So that so we the chief did finally send that letter in, Jerry Gallock or whoever sent it in. So we do have that, that type of a letter. That was on the security system as well, if I believe. So. Yeah, but the letter we got from him, so he's not so far off the letter we got from him about <coughs> on the boat street building over here pretty much said exactly what he's saying okay so it just basically says you have a security system you're right. on your own yep yep, yep. so that's so, all we're looking for it yep. gives them the opportunity to, to comment with further recommendations. It, exactly and it gives the officers a heads up that you're changing mm -hmm. use and it's going to be a little bit different so it is a good idea yeah we're, we're pretty in touch with the police department lovely they know us pretty well <laughs> All right, so this will be a motion here for uh, materials to, s I'll make a motion to waive materials to satisfy section 98L1A through S as they apply to conditional use review. I'll second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? All right, next is uh, site plan approval requirements. So once and those, again. And those aren't applicable because it's not a site plan review. Aaron just oh, yeah. took those off. Thank you. You're right. And you already submitted those anyways a long time a while ago. So, um, so you're just looking at those. That would be two two waivers then. Yep. Because the, the third one we're not. You're just going to put something on the plans about the low impact design. Okay. Um, would we like to have a Frank? I know you probably want to have a site walk out there because you uh, haven't been out there. I haven't been out there at all. Yeah. So our next meeting is going to be on the 16th of January. Um, do you want to go out there, say, at uh, 4.30? What time's the sunset? 4.22 now? What was it today? Yeah. Give it two weeks, about 4.50. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say, well, I, I can go anytime. I mean, I can. You want to say Saturday morning. <laughs> well, sa Saturday at 7. I like the Saturday morning. 7? Yeah. <laughs> 8. I live there you. now, so you can go uh, whenever. Well, they're open at 7, I mean, right? Th those people that... 16th? Huh? 16th? Yeah. Um, I can do I can do 4.30. Okay. I can do 4.30. I can do 4.30 on this. All right. Does that work for you? Yep. I'll make it work. And then we want to have a public hearing that on evening? 16th? Was on that? the 16th. Yeah, two Thursdays from now. And then can we notice a public hearing yep. for the 16th at 6.30? Yep. All right. See you in a couple Thursdays. Great site visit. Perfect. All right, that's it. Yeah. Okay. And Thanks, how's guys. the last name spelled? Aaron. B A R T H. Okay. Can I have you explain something real quick? Sure. What, you, what is that? What happened here? I don't know. Typo. Are, are you uh, are you judging my? No, 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 no. You should see my typos. James has no reason. No, no. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> James, is, no James is king of the typos. No orders. Never said I could spell, okay? <laughs> Close enough. Um, you spelled it exactly how it sounds. That's fine. I'm phonetic. Yeah. All right, so next on the agenda in new business, we're going to discuss the land use ordinance, and I guess we can also pull in 
this village overlay and um, Perfect timing. CI district expansion request. We can also talk about it in there. But one of the things I just wanted to mention, and maybe this is something that we should talk to Steve, the town manager, and also get the board of selectmen involved. But we know how dangerous Route 4 is, Portland Street, and it's only going to get worse. And I think the DOT, the state needs to do something. They need to put in turning lanes there. I know specifically like the turn off of Route 4 onto Blackberry Hill. Mm -hmm. like when I'm, I slow down and I get all the way into the shoulder and then turn in there. But it's like, and then cars are like right behind. I mean, I, I know it happens to a lot of other people too, all over the place. And there's more and more businesses that are moving out there. We need to have turning lanes really out there. It should be a coalition between the town and then lean on business owners to advocate for so we need to have like we should have like a public hearing. We should at, we should first engage the engage the state, the DOT, and then see if they would be willing to have a public hearing here in town with business owners and and residents and look at some key areas. I know Blackberry Hill Road is one of them, for instance. Um, it's you know maybe getting rid of some of the shoulder length and then putting a turning lane in the middle. Center lane, yeah. Well, there's a long history of the discussion about that whole Route 4 corridor yep. accidents and everything that go along. Oh, I know, there. I know. And this is like, I remember and, a couple of summers ago. And, and I think that your point is well taken. And if we could get maybe even a DOT person down here at some point in time to talk to them about I it. I mean, just even slowing cars down, I think that if you, I'm not a traffic expert, but I mean, like, I'll use Blackberry Hill again. It's just if you put in some raised islands or bollards or something just to slow cars down because... I was out there this weekend a couple times, and it I was, just reminded me. So I've got, I've actually, no, you may, I have bollards where we kind of did our experience with Sullivan Street. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're gonna, you guys are going to be out there putting bollards out on Route 4. Well, I can work tell with you what, not they're, not, they're not going <laughs> to last. They can <laughs> tell you that. So yeah. he's going to see them and just, yeah. yeah. They're, yeah, they're, well, they bounce right back. They Slalom course. They the car more than it does them. They bounce right back. But hey, something, look, you know, if, if you take a drive down Route 4 through the Lee Roundabout, and you go out into Northwood, that's a 55 mile an hour road. And you know, I know they have some accidents out there, but they've got some different types of traffic things. But I don't want to get too far off, but I think it's just something that we should mm -hmm. probably look at like soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so looking at your land use ordinance amendments here, James. Yeah, I can go through every everything. So this is the um, marijuana section. And I think, this is one of the last significant times of, of touching this ordinance is, is the intent behind this specific change. And um, just we've been separating out the marijuana changes to everything else. And we'll get into everything else uh, next next meeting. Um, so I'll just go through every every change. The first one is simply a, a simplifying uh, medical marijuana cooperative and medical marijuana production facilities. You can just strike out what I have struck out and just say marijuana production facilities. The next change there is crossing out R4. There is no Route 4 in R3, right. so it's extra. Just, uh... um, I am crossing out dispensaries because dispensaries is kind of a relic of the, the past. They're storefronts now. You're not going to have dispense, right? You're going to have dispensaries. You're going to have storefronts. Um, the next change, there's a little symbol here, the, the plus symbol, and that refers to... But can you go back to that sentence, James, that we have crossed out dispensaries? Yep. I think you should rearrange that so it's a little more clear that it's adult use and, me adult use and medical marijuana production facilities and storefronts. Because the way it's got, you've kind of got adult use and medical separated in that sentence. So it says um, adult use and marijuana production. So you've got adult use and marijuana production facilities and medical marijuana storefronts. Like they're two separate things. But an, you, all, you want to include an adult use storefront as well. I don't think that sentence really specifies oh, right. yeah. the way so it's written. Adult use and medical marijuana storefronts and production. Right, facilities. right. Adult use storefront should be yeah. in there too. I yeah. got gotcha. you. If you're on the same site, you're, it's not another. Is that what you're? Well, 
what dispensaries still exist in the they state. do and right, you can still create a I would dispensary not, I would not yeah. strike dispensaries. okay is that more of a associated with medical than no, adult use or not anymore the no the difference is they have different laws mm -hmm. uh, you know or, or abilities yeah um, they can cultivate unlimited amounts um, it's just they just have different uh, regulations uh, than storefronts so, um, but they're not, they're not eliminated from the state. <coughs> they still exist. And they could come in on to Route 4 very easily. What was your thought process behind striking it, James? I thought dispensaries were given a certain number and then those storefronts. It was a, at first. It was. There's and more available. Yeah. There's more slots available. It's just more, it's easier it's to a, go for a storefront than it is for a dispensary. I'll give you an example, I could buy out a dispensary. Yep. Right? I could buy a dispensary and then uh, convert that dispensary to a tri can and then and then apply to open a dispensary or or change my storefront to a dispensary. I think I think if you bought out a dispensary within our definition you'd still be a storefront. Like, I'll leave it in there. Just leave it in there. Yeah, yeah. I would, it'd be easier it was, just to leave it in. If it's still used in the state or if it's, and it's a separate yeah. thing, like Aaron said, I think we should they're, keep it in there. Yeah, they're combined into one definition. Anyway, leave it language in there. That's that's fine. I'm just trying. My my whole goal behind like is trying to get our ordinance simplified. We have a lot of fat in there, so that is an opportunity for that. Okay. He also wants pictures. I'll add that in. Picture book. More pictures is better. Uh, so, storefronts cannot be in a thousand feet of, and there's a notation here. So, there were production facilities that were permitted as agriculture before we had um, marijuana defined. There's three of them in town. This reduces the setback, so it allows them, they're already growing marijuana there anyways. This allows them to come in front of the planning board and get a conditional use approval and improve their building. Uh, my concern would be that they may want to expand. But they wouldn't be required to be a thousand foot setback? It just reduces the setback to the, the, the state minimum. We discuss reducing our minimum anyway to the state minimum. But th so this just does it. So it reduces the minimum for those who are already growing marijuana anyways, but doesn't reduce it wholesale. You know, it doesn't reduce. Well, that's and I understand that. But if they have an existing facility, like I said, what if they want to expand that? Are they still going to be allowed to expand now they're doing? Right, they're, they're just doing medical now, and then they... Now they're constructing something new, maybe. Maybe they want adult use there as How well. Do we, you could probably just say they can't, they can't expand. It has to be within... Didn't the, we do this with David, what's his name, up on School Street? Pretty much. That's the same, same, similar idea, is that they're already in, non-conforming. It's a way to get them into... David the, Springer. David yeah. Springer, we yeah, did that Yeah, it's a way with. to get them to the planning board and... Because he wanted to expand. Yep. Yep. Does this prevent somebody from, if, if the marijuana facility is existing, can somebody come in and put a child care center in 200 feet away from it? Yes. After the fact. Yeah. You can't locate a new marijuana thing Correct. close to something that exists, but right. a change in use after is so, okay. Yeah, so uh, the, uh, okay. daycare can come in. I check that one out they would be knowingly entering that position knowing right. that there's right. a store that's cultivation the neighborhood facility. Yeah. Into. Yeah. okay yeah i think that's my only question is does the language say something about they can't construct you know they can't do any new construction they can only i think we maintain can, what they have i think we can yeah it's just within their building yeah difference between adult use and medical though so yeah so the definition needs to be defined because medical you're limited adult use has the they're, ability, they're defined yeah they're both defined. They, they have the ability to to 
do have met. So like 420, yeah. right? Yep. They wouldn't be able to expand that. Correct. Not the not the footprint, but they'd be able to utilize the building internally. Condition yeah. and get a conditional use application for. What's that? If you talk, you got to use the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You're going to get in Sorry. trouble. Um, on the second page, 8.25.5.B, uh, this just oh, reads. Wait a minute, James. You skipped over odor control. That's, again, that's a dispensary store. So we're just going to leave thing. it. Okay. We'll keep it. Can we make a note on odor control while we're talking about it? And just say that we're on it. <laughs> so for the people at home that have a facility or they're growing, just to let you know, odor control is becoming an issue, and we're going to be taking care of it. So that's all. Yeah, to go along with that, um, coming June, instituting licensing. So it'll be yearly licenses, and if you're not keeping up with odor control, um, I mean, there's certain measures that the select board will have to make sure that you got to show that you've replaced your carbon f filtration or, I mean, add a much, I'm not entirely sure of the laws on Good luck. licensing. But at least you have once every year, you have, you, they, it's a public hearing to get your license. Are there fines? I, I think you could risk not having your license renewed. I'm not sure, I'm not that, yeah, up to date with how the licensing works, but, the but there's no ideas. there's no good way to measure odor. Well, I think the I know it's written down. I know there's a standard, yeah. but it's very difficult. One person's nose is different than the other. They can make a case for it. It should all just depend <laughs> on your neighbors. Uh, really, I'll use an example because <laughs> uh, we've had complaints at our our uh, cultivation facility in North Berwick. Um, however, we're doing everything uh, absolutely positive, uh, possible. We do a negative uh, pressure uh, setup where air is being drawn into the building and carbon scrubbed going out, um, but there's still some residual odor that is there. So there's got to be, you know, even at our store uh, here in Berwick, uh, I approach my store outside and I can smell it. Um, however, we, there's uh, the, the closest residence is pretty far away from us. So is there some type of, uh, you know, a distance that uh, there's going to be that odor control, um, you know, based on the location of the building? Yeah, wasn't it written right, at, right now? At it's the property, property line. line. Property. It's at the property so, line. So the odor can't exceed the property line. Correct. Fair enough. Yeah. That's how it says right now. Let's get a nice big piece of property and put your building right in the middle. All right, what do you got next, James? On the security plan, so it now reads, um, the third police chief or designee, instead of saying that the security measures are acceptable and also consistent with state requirements, that the department has reviewed the measures and if they have any recommendations. So it just goes back to the back and forth dialogue we've had where like we just did tonight. Yeah, just they have the opportunity to review. Right. The next one, the cultivation thing, striking this out allows the facilities to vertically integrate, which means growing it on site and selling it on site. I don't see any reason to restrict that. I think it's probably more secure. It amplifies the property values, which is the most thing I'm keyed in on. You've growing and selling on the same site property's worth more. And I think that's the big, I mean, that's, and I just, I don't see any, it, the, the way that this reads is it's limiting. The vertical. cultivation. It's limiting vertical integration. I don't, I don't see a real good reason to do that. Are they two separate permits or one permit? They are two separate permits, two separate, and they will be two separate licensing. So Aaron's property will be three Licenses. Three. Three. I'm not cultivating. Well, I mean, you're process processing. Okay. Two. So yeah, I see what this is. So if you have, if you're cultivating and you also have a storefront. Oh no, three. He's right. If you if you have cultivating and a storefront, 
you can't ha you you have to have like a thousand square feet, a thousand square feet. You can't have like a little three hundred square foot store right. and seventeen hundred square feet of growing. And it doesn't make that make that's that makes sense. Yeah. Well, with medical, that the state has capped the square footage you can have for growing space for flowering growing space, and that's also included vertical. You can only have one. It, they count if you have it separated. So, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, if I think about it in terms of like a plant greenhouse, you know, it would be like your store has to be. Yeah, you want 80 20. You know, same you, size. Yeah, if even that. Yeah. You go to like Wentworth greenhouses, you know, right. they'd have to have like two full greenhouses just for cash registers. So that makes sense. Okay. The, the, the last page, again, forget the bottom part, but um, the part that I am suggesting is we. Yes. Basically, um, start we start capping uh, yes. starting June 2020. Everyone that's in, they're in. If anyone else wants to come in, they they have to wait or you know buy the property from another facility. And um, the number that's on there is the number of places that have been permitted or the number of um, establishments that I think will be in before June 2020 anyway. Yes, I've been very busy almost every day talking about this plant. I was thinking, I, I was glad when I pulled up our packet and I saw this in there because I was thinking about this the other day too. I think, so I think, I think in terms of marijuana, I think um, we've learned a lot and there's no way to know the sequencing of how things come in. At some point, marijuana could have been a thing that jump-started the, the downtown, would have required an ordinance amendment. I think, I think we're, we're good with having one medical storefront. Um, but in terms of, I think once you start weighing the costs and the, the benefits, there's definitely cost, um, you know, including affecting neighborhoods, which is, it's, it is, it is too bad that some neighbors don't want that use next to their property. In terms of route four, in terms of property values, I mean, we're talking millions of dollars of, of property taxes on route four and hopefully it's we won't know the true costs until down the road but i don't i think we we've maximized maximized our benefit in terms of this use so it makes sense to just cap it see where we're at year and a half two years from now and then we can address it if i think it, we need I, to tweak. I, I like the one down you know in the in the village overlay uh, in Route Nine, I would um, I think I know the one was that's that's the Springer property, but I would even think that two out there would be possibly. We're gonna we're getting way off topic here, so unless you have something that you can say in thirty seconds. Is the downtown a, is that an adult use? No, no, and it will never be yeah. at this point. <laughs> at this point, as long as as long as. as <laughs> I could see a second one being out on Route Nine in the R three. Yeah, um, but. For right now, one is fine, but I could definitely see somebody out there wanting to. There's a, there's some industry out there, industrial drive, back out there. Yep, and he's actually called me. Not industrial, commercial drive. Commercial drive. Commercial drive yeah. And I think, I for me, for you guys, I think it's. I know I need a a break, and I think it just be beneficial. Just see where we're at. And you know, wait. I, I think it's a year, but maybe, maybe it's the next cycle. And all right, I'm good. I'm good with that. Yeah. I mean, that would be the only change that I could see to make. But I know Sean's happy with one. Um, <laughs> but nobody's come forward yet. So um, all right, that looks good. And then we have the request of Mr. Is it Cotton? Yes, sir. Sir, if you want to step up to the podium and just. Yes, sir, Dana Cotton. I live at 20 Rochester Street in Berwick. And so I was about. surprised to see, I, I tried to, I looked up your, your place on Google yeah. Maps. Are you one lot outside of the RC, out of the uh, CI district, out of the village overlay? I'm just, I'm just the one lot, yes. So you're one lot, you're just... Sitting there, yeah. Yeah, I just, it kind of goes, oh, you probably know, it kind of goes down, then it shoots off to the left there, if you're going up the street on the right. It's that long driveway that goes in? Yes, that yes. That long one in the building sits yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just so it would be the town hall, and let's see, the Jimmy Jones, the Gormans, and then me. 
on well, so uh, Rochester you, Street. So your zero. next, so the next door neighbor to you is in the CI, the Village Overlay. Yep. Uh, yeah, I believe they are. Yes. Yeah, both, both CI and Village Overlay. Right. But right. the Bracket and Shaw property is not in it. In that one of your butters. Um, no, Bracket and Shaw would be further back the other way. Oh, he's around down. River, yeah, right? he's down around the corner yeah. off of. He's, this is Rochester Street. This is Rochester. Street. Are you right Street. next to the boxing oh. place? Oh, okay. Exactly. Right next to. To the, the jazz boxing. I'm thinking right. both. So if you're looking at jazz boxing, you're over here because he's in the village, right? I believe he is. Yeah. If you drive up Rochester Street, it'd be me and then jazz boxing on the right. Oh, okay. Then he's not in the then he's not in the, the village overlay. Yeah, and I just know it ends. He's just outside, so he's a budding. So he can opt in. Did you have a chance to opt in when we did this like three years ago? You know, I didn't. I I, I missed out on that. No, I didn't. I didn't do that. No, no. Okay. My bad on that. But what does it actually take? This request that he's making, us to approve his request subject to the town adopting, because we had a public hearing. Public hearing, yeah, and then we do have to ad adopt the map modification at town meeting. Close the town vote, yeah. And it's got to go to all the abutters, too, and they have to be afforded so there's a the process opportunity. Yeah. yeah, I understand that. Yes, okay. yes sir. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I lived in here since the mid 80s. Um, nice, comfortable little town. Uh, come from North Conway originally. And, Moved over here from Dover and glad I raised the kids in a nice little rural community here. Uh, got one left and uh, and uh, you're probably looking to, to buy a house probably sometime this next year. This year, it's already here. And uh, just looking to maybe, uh, I'm not looking to do anything specific with it. I'm just looking to maybe upgrade the property for future potential down the road for somebody, maybe an option down there for it. So that's basically what, where I'm at. Whether you're not, I'm, you're not going to see me doing anything with it, as far as laying goes, as long as I'm there. Mm -hmm. So, Excellent. I think that we should do a separate public hearing and notice for this request. Yep. Yep. I, I think I have to anyway. I think you have to. Yeah. yeah we can't lump this into the land use changes. Right. Because but let me just ask: if, if you're going to go in there and tweak the map, uh, do you know of anybody else that's? on the periphery of the whole district? I, I know, if we're touching it, I, I can send out a, a letter just say, if you want in. That was a good time. Because we were also looking at School Street. That was that was a potential, because that, that came a little bit further out yeah. to Logan this time <coughs> around. Does the Knights of Pythias building behind the Blue Side building, are they in the district already? I think they're, I think they're just outside. I. I off the top of my head, I want to say they're outside the village overlay district, but somehow still in CI, because the CI is different, different shape than the village overlay district. But that's a building. Could they? Are, are they abutting? Could they adopt that property in they're if they wanted to? Almost behind the Blue Sword building, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Blue Sword building's in it. I mean, it might be worth finding out what they're thinking. I mean. I think their membership is down to two. Right. Yeah, I just say, and just like your reasoning, it, it increases the op options. Potential, potential down the road, yeah. And I, Tommy Belanger, what's, what's his, uh, Belanger's auto sales across the street from me? What is his designation? He must be. I think he's in the village. I think it's. He's in the overlay. I know it's Shoreland. It's, it's in the village. Yeah, it, yep. Yep, I think it's, is it the village overlay district and mm -hmm. Shoreland commercial industrial? Yeah, I think the, the line pretty much goes kind of go through my yeah. through my through my property. Maybe the the, the overlay district goes. Didn't they go kind of pass right through the middle of it or part of it originally? I looked it up tonight when I, I when I got home from work and I looked at and it's it's kind of does one of these things. Yeah, yeah. Behind Eleanor's way and yeah, got to update did that. It, did it follow lot lines when when yes. you did it? Okay. Yeah, it was. It was pretty much identical to the urban overlay okay. district okay. and we renamed it and then added the Estherbrook school i think it was and then we also added the uh, sawmill hill and we also added church it's part of school street down to logan street yes yep subsequently subsequently and i think All now right. that the prime looks like it's taking off over there um it would be good be good too to maybe could meet up with that opportunity with with them over there you know down the road so. How much time do you need to get the word out? Do you want to maybe do a public hearing on this next month? Oh, yeah. So public hearing, um, I think it's February 20th is when we can have the public hearing for... I'm just saying enough time for you to get the word out to some other potential people. Yep. Who may. Yep. So what if instead of doing a public hearing for this on the 16th, what if we go to... What's February the first? 20th. No, no, no. The first meeting of 
Because we have to have a separate public hearing for this. Yeah, we could, we could do it the same day, just separately noticed. Or we could, do, we could do a public hearing for this particular thing on the 6th. Okay. Can we do that's that? That's February. You February just, 6th. Yeah. No, February 6th. I, that way it gives you, that gives you four, one, two, three weeks. Yeah. Just make some phone calls. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't cut yeah. ourselves short on time. I, I like that idea. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll have the final public hearing then. We have two more meetings to work on land use. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for okay. consideration. Thank you for checking. And then we have two more meetings that we could discuss land use ordinances. Yeah, I'm looking at stuff like um, accessory dwelling units. So that's in-law apartments. Again, simplifying that. Um, we, amongst us, I think we have a handful of things. We're not making change just to make change, are we? No, so what we're doing is actually we've, we've been taking the phone calls we're getting and the people that come into our office, yep. and we've been mental noting the things that don't make sense in the land use ordinance that we need to get clarification on, and that's why we're trying to clarify. Oh, wait a second. And things you mean that don't actually, make sense. You're, you're listening to people who come and knock on the door and trying to help. Wow. Listen, don't tell people we listen. We don't. No, I'm just <laughs> but anyway, so that's where the, the changes are coming. There's a couple things that are very unclear that we've had to reach out in the yeah. past. And even so, when we get asked the question again, we're still sometimes unclear. So that's where we're going with it. And there's a lot of uh, redundancy in there, too. I mean, you, did, you guys done a good, did a good job of getting rid of the, a lot of that redundancy in there, things that just, you know. But no, that's the we're way to do it. it. Yeah. Yep. See? Town of the town of Berwick government listens. <laughs> Tell everyone. Yeah, and once our comp plan, um, I guess we go down. To inf this is informational items. Would you like me to go to informational Please. items? We have another public comment. Don't we? Oh, yeah. I know we have that. Um, we're going to. Uh, we're not going to act on this old business here this evening because the applicant did not come here for Old Pine Hill Road. So. Um, we will not be acting on that tonight. No action. Uh, another public comment session is open to anybody who'd like to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. Um, just be advised if you are going to talk about any pending applications and the applicant is not here, we can't answer any questions or, or talk about it. So public comment session is open. Going once, going twice. We'll close the public comment session. Informational items, Mr. James. So we're doing our uh, comprehensive plan. Um, members of the public are welcome to come, or if you want to be part of it, uh, shoot me an email at planning at berwickmaine.org. But just uh, follow up on the land use ordinance stuff. It's our intention, the planning department, to uh, once we have our comp plan, comprehensive plan, uh, which could take, a, a, it's about a two year, two to three year long process. Um, to completely rewrite our, our land use ordinance, mm -hmm. keep the processes that work well, but um, in terms of every single page and every single word, look at it and go, does this meet our comprehensive plan of 2022? Okay. Uh, we have 400 responses to our survey, and um, which our survey was a little different from the downtown vision plan survey. We had a lot more open-ended questions. So I started going through that um, this weekend and we're gonna start sifting through uh, all the comments. As we said, everything, everything's read and start compiling themes and the, the comp plan committee will start breaking stuff down. And the next comp plan meeting is January 9th and that's actually uh, centered around transportation so the safety on Route 4 will certainly be a segment of that, to the plan. Um, Has your committee grown? You had 10 yeah. to start with. How many are you up to now? It's, it's, it's growing. Uh, I think with any, probably, there hasn't been new appointments, but we're kind of getting to that point where um, reached out to the library and the school board to try to get a, and there's a school board member that has indicated they're interested in, in participating. Uh, we have a rolling, offer to like um, the fire department if they have a, a rep that wants this to be there sewer police same thing um and i tr try to tie in public works as, as much as possible just so we're on the, all on the same page so it's probably probably get up to like 12 13 but with a 13 member committee you got seven will show up and then you have a completely different six that will show up and i think that's that's how envision baroque worked for a while and i think it's a good way to 
if it's a two and a half year long process, not to burn anybody out. Uh, so period on that. Uh, Steve and I met with Great Falls Construction today. It was a great meeting uh, just to go over the preliminary TIF and credit enhancement stuff and to really get a get an idea on timeline. They are looking, they're, um, for the first time next week, they said they're looking to uh, take a deep dive into Berwick, which kind of means they're um, uh, really going to start moving the needle pretty soon. Uh, they recently opened their Station Square project six weeks ago, so I imagine they're busy with that. Plus, they're doing, like, um, I think some highway projects, and they do uh, public works facilities, and they manage... I think 15 of their own properties. They got all kinds of properties, but they they said they're really excited to turn their attention to Berwick, and this is where the fun stuff for them really starts. And um, let's just say um, when it comes to the amount of investment that's going to be going downtown, the estimate that I give that I thought was pretty optimistic was maybe over the course of 15 years you could see um, – uh, 10 to 15 million dollars of investment the the number is uh, I think higher and quicker so that was really exciting to to hear um, I don't know if I, I mentioned this uh, I might have already mentioned this but they're looking to have a c concepts by April and they already have listening sessions scheduled for February April and June. They're posted now. Have you posted them yet? They're, I can post them. I can put them on the website um, the next week or so. We were just kind of holding off to make a Facebook event, but we can. We can. Um, they're already reserved from the. In the it'll yeah. be in the town hall auditorium, um, or if it's a smaller attendance, it might be here. Just depending on. Just the point when Kevin Gray and I went up and met with them, we went up and saw that station square and walked through it. We did emphasize to them that the bigger picture includes the periphery. So someone like Mr. Cotton and anybody that's on the periphery there, um, in that longer range timeline of five to ten years, there may be opportunities because they're they're going to make a significant investment in our downtown and. A lot easier just to keep growing it if 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 everything lines itself up. So, and their their contact information is in the town hall, so they'd be interested in, in speaking with you. Who would that be now? It's Great Falls Construction. Oh, Great Falls. Okay, the ones that join. The yep. Yeah, and you you may want to come to the next listening session because they are very informative. When, when would that be? February sixth. February. Uh, what was the date on that, um, Jay? I it's a I, I don't recall off the top of my head, but. I can reach out. I can get it to you one way or the other. Thanks. Anybody else? Any informational items? Anybody else? The only thing I had is I was hoping the applicant would have been here tonight because I've gone through a series of questions. And a lot of it is because I'm trying to catch up to this thing because it has a long history. I think we are kind of starting over again because it sat idle for a while. So if you don't mind, I'll comment. I'll put all my comments down on a piece of paper share them with you and Lee J and James, and then that way they, you guys would at least have an understanding of where I'm thinking or what I'm... Maybe thinking. you could give them a head start then too. Yeah. Yeah. On answering these questions. Yeah. Okay. Because I remember when the first cluster went through, because th this is a cluster development. Correct. Yes. And when the first one came through, it was, you know, th it's a process. And I'm going down through and I'm trying to figure out whether or not that whole process has been checked off. Did we do this? Did we do that? It's pretty, it's pretty defined in the ordinance as to what's required. So that's where my questions okay. are coming from. Yep. So I'll run those by Lee yeah. J and yeah. James and CCU. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, concert promoter has one uh, announcement. September 12th, mark your, your calendar is 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. We're having a pretty uh, local prominent country rock band um, pretty much booked for September 12th. And um, uh, August 1st, as a like kind of getting there, was it's Marty England's band. I wish no, it's not, but they are awesome. They are Revi revivalists, right? Recon reconstruct reconstructions. Yeah, um, we got how about, how about the fourth of Berwick Fourth of July fireworks? How are we doing on that? 
Um, we have raised zero dollars for it so far, so start it's the first I've heard of it. But start passing the boot at corner Get some point. sponsors. Do you have a spare one of these binders kicking around, or should I just track Paul's down at his house? We can make you one. Yeah, you can print a new one. Okay. Because I've been going on on the website to yeah, we can get, get you one. Yeah. Wait, I printed you an ordinance. No, you didn't. I printed like nine ordinances. I got one. I got one. I don't well, have we one. We can make you one. I got a duct it's tape binder. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> okay, next is the adjournment. Sorry. I'm having too much fun. Tonight. I move that we adjourn the January 2nd planning board meeting. 2000. 2020. Well, that was a big debate the other morning. Oh, we have a motion it? on the table here. <laughs> Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second. second it for discussion this, purposes. There's no okay. discussion on adjournment. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> All I'll in talk, favor. I'll talk to you afterwards. <laughs>